What's up all my beautiful Irish people? Today we have a bit of a throwback video. Okay, this is a news talk video and it's called Joseph Pushka found guilty of the murder of Ashley Murphy. So we're gonna do a full review here, a full comprehensive review because I forgot to kind of give my detailed thoughts on how we could prevent this in the, in the future guys. So make sure to comment down below. I forgot to give my intro. Welcome back all my beautiful Irish people too. County Gaines News Media Network, okay? Like I said, guys, we're gonna give a full comprehensive review of what is going on here. Now, of course, guys, this beautiful girl, young lady, got murdered by a Slovakian man, okay, kind of a gypsy guy or some, something like that. Don't exactly know what he was. They never clearly told us what he was, but a European man, okay, a European, and he got life in prison, which I believe is 21 years. He'll probably get more because of the way it was, you know, cold blooded and things like that. But we're going to listen to this video, see exactly what happened and stay tuned, guys. I'm going to give you my thoughts on how we could prevent this in the future. OK, because I think this is easily preventable, very, very easily pre uh, preventable. And if I get elected Taoiseach or elected into government, I will definitely change the laws to help what I'm going to explain. guys. So stay tuned. A result has come in terms of uh... Uh, the Yusuf Puska trial. Uh, Frank Rainey uh, is on the line now. Good afternoon, Frank. Good afternoon, Sean. Yeah, so uh, he, he was found guilty. He was. Um, just in the past few minutes, I've... Uh... Everybody knew that he was guilty. What we really want to know is the sentencing and how we can actually prevent against this happening again. Just stepped out of course 13 at the Criminal Courts of Justice, where, as you can imagine, there was an incredibly charged, uh, nervous energy around the building when word filtered out that a verdict was imminent. That happened um, just after the jurors had taken their lunch break. They'd only been deliberating for about two and a half hours. Good. It has been such an emotional and difficult few weeks for all involved, particularly Ashley's parents, Ray and Kathleen, oh, yeah. uh, her sister, Amy, no. brother Cahill and her loving boyfriend Ryan oh, uh, all of whom so sad massive family young woman oh this is horrendous guys horrendous I had a front row seat to this horror show that has gone on not just for the past few weeks their nightmare obviously began on a cold January afternoon last year and I hope that today's verdict will give them some comfort because as you say after deliberating for just a couple of hours the jury has found a Yosef Pushka guilty of the murder of Ashley Murphy uh, and were the family in court to hear that? They were. The The courtroom, um, as it has been throughout the past few weeks, was bursting at the seams mm. uh, when the jurors returned to announce their decision. Um, it was standing room only in court 13 and overflow court uh, was also opened up to deal with the crowds who came down today. But despite those crowds, you could still hear every footstep as the jurors shuffled back into their seats. Um, I can only imagine what was going through the minds of Ashley's family. As I say, they've been here day in, day out, sitting through it all, even the dreadful post-mortem evidence which can't have been easy for them to hear to hear how Ashley was stabbed 11 times in the neck and how the injuries to her fingers uh, suggested that she had fought her attacker mm. uh, it's unbelievable guys it's absolutely disgusting and very <clears throat> very sad to see of course we have the boyfriend did they say his name was Ryan you know he gave a really powerful speech after and the BBC actually labeled him as this kind of extremist this kind of racist guy which he's not guys you know he's just a pretty pretty passionate guy of course his girlfriend was murdered innocently you know super sad so I understand the emotions that were involved and he's now suing the BBC for calling him a racist and be uh, all this type of stuff and, and you know like a, like a like extremist and this type of stuff which he should guys and he, he'll probably win that slander case but it's unbelievable to see that she fought back guys but this is the whole point of this video guys you know we have to now bring in new laws not harsher sentencing because sentencing doesn't matter, guys, because the person is going to be badly hurt or injured or died or whatever. We need to, like, basically bring in new laws to bring in, like, handguns. Okay, firearms, guys. Now, before people start saying, oh, that's a crazy idea, look at every other country in the world. You know, the U.S., Czech Republic, they have, in some places, with a lot of guns, they have zero crime. If I was Taoiseach, if I was elected to Taoiseach position or a minister or a senator or whatever, I would definitely try and roll out new laws that if you're over, you know, 21 years old, uh, you can buy a handgun to protect yourself, especially women. You know, women, um, you know, now in India and Pakistan, different countries in the Middle East, they're now protesting and they actually got rights to carry firearms because they want to protect themselves against men who are crazy because there's always going to be crazy psycho men out there, guys. 
we should absolutely bring in firearms for any woman or man who's over 21 years old and that is lived in the country like 20 years or whatever or like is an Irish citizen okay so, something like that guys that people obviously can't just get handguns okay you have to be like a citizen you have to be like here for like 25 years or something like that like actual have regulations but if you're 21 years old you should be able to get that quite easily you know because if she had a handgun 600 euro guys for a flipping Glock 17 and she'd still be alive guys you know unfortunately now only the Guardi have guns, which is good. The Guardi should have ARs. They should have all these type of guns to protect us, okay, to protect the citizens. But at the same time, guys, as citizens, we need firearms, guys. We need to bring in guns. And I wish we had a second amendment like they have in the US, guys, but we don't, unfortunately. And in Ireland, we're pretty much sitting ducks. Women are pretty much just at the whim of men that are crazy and psycho. So bringing in handguns for men and women over 21 <clears throat> and also, you know, having some sort of regulation around it. Like you can only, you know, buy it if you're a citizen for sure a citizen okay that you've lived here over 20 years so you're a citizen you have like a bit of experience with it as well that would be that would prevent this she would still be alive for 600 euro guys you know it's unfortunate but you know it is what it is guys it's crazy you know could have been prevented a lot of people don't understand this could be prevented a lot of people don't even want to talk about that they want to talk about like pepper spray and so pepper spray is fine we need guns guys women need firearms guys women need guns to protect themselves against psycho men you know what i mean it's crazy. Um, the deliberations resumed just before lunchtime, and then very soon afterwards, as I say, they came back with that verdict, which was Good. unanimous. The family Good. filed back in then. Um, uh, Ashling's sister, Amy, and Ashling's boyfriend, Ryan, uh, were first into the courtroom. And I just noticed Amy looking skyward as she waited for the jury to come back in. A few minutes later then, uh, her parents, Ray and Kathleen, returned to the court. And I noticed... Uh, Kathleen holding a really lovely uh, framed photograph of Ashling. We've all seen the photographs of Ashling Murphy doing the rounds over the last 20, 21 months or so since she was brutally killed in Tullamore. This was a photograph that I hadn't seen myself until today and she held it aloft for everybody to see after the jury uh, announced their decision. Mm -hmm. Pushka had been brought back into the courtroom by four prison officers and I just noticed as soon as his fate was sealed and it did take a moment for him to realize because um, there was an interpreter sitting in the dock alongside him, as has been the case throughout the trial. And it was only when that interpreter translated the jury's decision for him that he knew he had been found guilty and is obviously now facing a life sentence. And <clears throat> here's the thing, guys. He did not not know <coughs> because the, the flippin' language barrier. <clears throat> okay, he understands English, guys. Let me tell you. <clears throat> okay, normally these gypsies and stuff are very low IQ. Okay, I'm half Eastern European, guys. Don't even talk to me about flipping gypsies and stuff. <laughs> I know all about it. Okay, every time I go to flipping Eastern Europe, bro, to see my family, there's always gypsies trying to fight me and shit like that, guys. Okay, it's absolutely crazy. A lot of these people are low IQ. They barely speak English, or they, it's not even they barely speak English. They barely speak English, but they just don't register what's going on, guys. You know what I'm saying? And that's probably what, one of the reasons why he did commit this heinous act. They're, they're, low IQ like under 70 or something like ridiculous guys and that's what people want to bring here unbelievable disgusting <clears throat> he bowed his head he looked very upset very distressed he scanned towards the back of the courtroom uh, where his um, family were sitting um, obviously learning this news themselves his family should be in jail too for aiding and abetting murder <laughs> like I don't give a shit guys I throw them all in jail you know what I mean? Like, and for, well, first of all, you extradite people, you know, put them back to the country they came from, which isn't, which is Slovakia, okay. Of course, you, you export people straight away, of course, uh, because, you know, they would treat them a lot, let's say, harsher in, in Eastern Europe. Let me just put it to you that way, guys. And at the same time, because Eastern Europe is much more safe than Ireland, much more safe. The police there are very strict. He would have never done this dumb shit in, in those countries because he would have known what's going to happen to him. He wouldn't get this flipping sentencing. We know what's going to happen to him, but. They should have put the damn uh, family, the whole family in jail, guys. Straight up for aiding and abetting and, and all this shit. Crazy. This yeah. afternoon. And uh, did the judge have everything, anything to say? Absolutely. Um, throughout this trial, obviously, as a, a trial judge, there wasn't a, an awful lot that he could have said in relation to the evidence, even the four or five hours that he spent summing up the evidence. But it was very clear how Mr. Justice Tony Hunt uh, felt about the evidence when the jurors came back. He 100 percent agreed with their decision and he had no hesitation in saying that. He said that he was satisfied that is, it is the correct verdict. 
And interestingly, he said, and this was a nod to, I suppose, how short their deliberations were. He said that he was glad they didn't waste any more time with what he described as Pushka's nonsense. Because Absolutely, guys. Absolutely. Pushka was talking shy. Like he was saying just nonsense to saying that he was flipping whatever. He was, just, he was lying. <clears throat> you know, he was actually, he actually denied it at first, guys, which is even worse. You know what I mean? So I would have given him two consecutive life sentences with like 50 years. I don't know why they can't do that here. Like, like why are they only giving him one life sentence, guys? That life sentence is bullshit. It's only like 20 years. Give him like two or three life cons life sentences for like, you know, a um, few other things. And then also give him like 30 or 40 years on top of that, guys, on top of the life sentence. You know, we, have, we need to be harsher with crime here. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what it was nonsense and he said that, that was no reflection on mr pushka's defense uh, everyone is entitled to put forward a defense he wasn't making a criticism of michael bowman and his team who uh, defended him throughout um, but he said to the jurors again when he um, was satisfied with the verdict that they had made he said quite literally they had made sure that nobody had got away with murder. He thanked the jury for their work. He said that they applied themselves so diligently. He told them that they didn't have to sit on a jury again for about 20 years or so. And then in relation to the Murphys, he spoke about them because, Sean, what often happens, and it was the same with this case, is that the victim in a case, um, Ashley Murphy in this case, are often forgotten about. Facts. You know, juries um, don't hear about the person that they were before this happened, the 23-year-old primary school teacher, the oh. lover of GAA, the oh. talented musician, because all the jury... Bro, I think I think it was a hate crime. <clears throat> I think this guy did a hate crime. <clears throat> she was GAA, she was, you know, flipping the most Irish woman there was ever. Ashling Murphy, I mean, there couldn't be a more fucking Irish name, do you know what I mean? I think that it was motivated by hate, and I would have given him more, uh, more sentencing because of that. You know what I'm saying? Everyone's trying to say hate crimes to minorities and stuff. Well, shit, Ashley Murphy. She's as Irish as it comes. J. Ashley Murphy. I mean, this is, bro, most Irish name I've ever heard in my life. You know what I mean? And and they didn't say it's a hate crime. I mean, dude, that's a hate crime. She's like GA mad, like fucking primary school teacher. She played the flipping tin whistle, the flipping baron, all that stuff. It's unbelievable. I would have given this guy 50 years plus a life sentence. I mean, what's going on here, guys? A life sentence is nonsense. It's bollocks. We need way more sentencing than this. He is concerned about is how she died and who was responsible. Oh. So Mr. Justice Hunt turned his, his attention to that. And he said that he really does hope that the family um, prepare some victim impact statements for the sentence hearing so that everyone can get a better flavor of the person that Ashley Murphy was, the person that the family truly misses every day. He said the case was particularly difficult for them because of the huge focus on it. As I speak to you now, there is you know, a large media presence outside the courtroom. It was extensively covered throughout the past few weeks. And he said that the reason that we're all here today and the reason that there's so much focus on it is because of the type of person that Ashling was. Of course. Again, it's a hate crime. She's the most Irish person I've ever met in my life. Like I'm, I'm very Irish and I'm patriotic and all this, but I'm not as Irish as her, guys. Like, I'm not, man. I'm half whatever Eastern European. She is as Irish as it gets. It should have been a hate crime, for sure, guys. It's attack on it's attack on the Irish spirit. What he just did is a demoralization of the public spirit, guys. She loved her sports. She loved GAA. He said oh, that was very important in terms of good things. Beautiful, be and she's beautiful as well. Bro, come on. This is an attack on Irishness, bro. In our community. You know, she was a primary school teacher. She loved kids. And he oh. said that he thinks that that's why people became so engaged with her, her story and with what happened to her. And in relation to Yosef Pushka, he turned around and he said to the men and women of the jury, pointing at the dock, we have evil in this room. That was followed by a round of applause as the jurors filed out of the courtroom. And I noticed Ashling's mother, Kathleen, um, with tears. It is evil, but it's stupidity. Like I said, because these people are low IQ. For anyone that knows what I'm talking about, anyone from Eastern European watching this, they're low IQ people, guys. You know, they can't even speak anything it's ridiculous right rolling down her cheeks holding that beautiful framed photograph of ashling aloft for the jurors to see as they filed out she turned around and she showed everyone in the public gallery and on the press bench that photo of her beautiful daughter oh. now the judge did say at this point that he had asked for silence but he said that that round of applause uh, was understandable yeah when is there likely to be a sentencing hearing frank They've already set a date for the sentence hearing and they aren't going to... So like I said, guys, the sentence was just a live sentence. And they should have sentenced the family. They should have also sentenced them for 50 extra years for an attack on the Irish culture and the Irish people. 100%. 100%, guys, if you can attack different minorities and stuff, you can 100% attack Irish culture. 
for sure. Why are we not saying this is a massive attack on Irish culture, guys? Also, equip and arm all the beautiful women of Ireland and guys as well, guys. Give them all the handguns. Absolutely, I'd be for that. If you're a citizen, okay? And, you know, then you can protect yourself from people, guys, and, you know, foreign crazy shit that's going on, guys. Because obviously this guy, I mean, he wasn't Irish, guys. He was a flipping gypsy or whatever. So I would 100% arm <laughs> all people in Ireland over 21 with handguns so you can protect yourself, especially women, okay, from crazy psycho guys. Because women can't protect themselves from, from men, unfortunately. That's just how it is, guys. You know what I mean? And, yeah, that's my resolve for it, guys. If I become t shirt I'll make it happen. I love you all. Stay free. I'll see you guys in the next one, man. Peace.